In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this maze book and how you can make money from this niche too. Welcome to my channel, my name is Caroline, and in the last few videos that I've released about puzzle books, I've talked about a new puzzle book software that is going to be released very, very soon. And in this video, I am super excited to show you what kinds of puzzles you can make and how I used it to make these pages. Something really quick that I do just wanna mention. So this software is going to be available for purchase on Tuesday, the 22nd of February at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that's United States time. So if you are not in the US, like me, you'll just have to work out what day or time it is that is going to be available for you to buy if you're interested. And the reason that I am so excited about the launch and why I have made quite a few videos about this software actually launching is because there are going to be some really great discounts for you if you decide that you do want to get this software for the first few days of it becoming available. And this app has been created by the guys who created all the other puzzle book software that I recommend and that I make videos about on my YouTube channel. So that's software like the Instant Puzzles Generator, the Word Puzzles Generator, and there's some others that they also have. They are very experienced with creating this kind of software and they do make this app specifically for Amazon KDP publishers. So there's no issue with whether you're wondering if you can use these puzzles to create low content books on Amazon. And I love all their other puzzle book making software, but I think this one is going to be my favorite. So this software is suited for the maze puzzle book niche on Amazon. And I'm just gonna take a very quick couple of minutes to have a quick look at this niche on Amazon before I go into a tutorial on how to use this software to create puzzle books for it. Okay, so I just started typing in maze books and it's brought down that drop down menu of possible niches or possible sub niches that could be popular for these types of books. Now I've decided because of the type of pages I'm gonna make in this tutorial, they're gonna be aimed at kids. So let's take a look at maze books for kids and see what comes up in these search results. Not a massive amount of competition, only over 5,000 results when we look at maze books for kids. And if we go through and have a look, are these books selling? Are they popular? Is there demand? What type of prices are they selling for? And that sort of thing. So let's take a look at this one, the 101 fun maze puzzles for age four to eight. It's a 118 page book. It's got a bestseller rank of 10,500 16. So what we're going to do is head on over to the Amazon book sales calculator, which is provided by TCK Publishing. And if we put in a bestseller rank of 10,500 for a book, we can estimate that book could possibly be selling around 360 copies per month. But what does that equate to in actual sales or in actual royalties? Royalties being the amount of money that we make. So we can go onto the KDP royalty calculator on the Amazon website. We are going to be making a paperback with a black and white interior. It had 118 pages. And let's take a look Look at how much it's selling for. The paperback is selling $7.90 for this maze book. So let's see what royalty it's making. It's making a $2.47 royalty, which is pretty good. So 360 copies per month times by a $2.47 royalty. That's almost $890 per month that that book could possibly be generating for the publisher of this book. So that's a really, really great income for a book that you are going to see how easy it's going to be to make. Let's have a look inside and see what kind of mazes it has very simple mazes it's only showing three but extremely simple there is not much effort really gone into creating those so super super simple the next one let's have a look at is mazes for kids age ages four to eight so this one has 83 pages and a bestseller rank of 10,000 328. So very, very similar bestseller rank as the one that we just looked at. So let's take a look inside of this one and see, you know, how much detail is into this one. And oh, that's not showing us any of the inside feature, but we can see on the back page, that's the kind of puzzles that are in this book. So a little bit more, in my opinion, a little bit more fun and a bit more creative than the book that we just looked at. Third book we can look at is Mazes for Kids Aged 4 to 8. And we've got a 119 page book selling for $6.99. And this one's bestseller rank is 7,342. 7,300 bestseller rank could be selling around 485 copies 
per month and 119 pages selling for $6.99. That one's got a $1.92 royalty so a bit of a less royalty because the page count is a bit higher for how much that they're selling for. A $1.92 royalty times 485 sales per month. This one's making a little over $930 per month approximately. You're looking at books that you could potentially be making around the $1,000 mark per month with these books. They're, they're great fun books and they're really fun to make. Let's have a look at the inside of this one. I just want to see the type of mazes in this one. So again, they're very simple. They're just black and white line art type of images or type of pages. Also, I am going to be releasing another video tomorrow on Tuesday. Once the software is pretty much going to be available or about to be available, depending on what time the video goes up, where I'll go over why this launch is so important, what is available within the software. So I'll actually sit and go through all the features that you get with the software, the different upgrades that you can get and the different pricing depending on the different features that you end up choosing if you decide to go with the software and, and all that sort of stuff. So if you want to know more details about the actual software in terms of what features are available, what upgrades are available and the costings, keep an eye out for that video on Tuesday. Also, I do want to offer a bonus myself for any of you guys who decide that you do want to go get this software and it's just for me to show how appreciative I am that you trust me and you trust my opinion on these sorts of things and that I just appreciate any single one of you who watches, who clicks the like button, who leaves me a comment or who shares my videos, it is appreciated more than you know. So I do want to offer you a free bonus. If you do end up purchasing the software, you will get this bonus. And that is that I have a list of keywords specifically related to the maze puzzle book niche, thousands of keywords related to this niche that you can use in your book listing on Amazon KDP, your title, subtitle, seven keyword slots, or you can use these keywords in your advertising if you run ads. So without further ado, let's get into the app and I will show you what you can create with it. Okay, so this is the dashboard where you log in and the software is called Hand Drawn Mazes. It's called that because they're not your typical square mazes like you would normally see and what we saw in quite a few of those puzzle books or maze books that we just looked at on Amazon. I feel like these ones are a lot more creative and I also feel like from what I've looked at on the books that are on Amazon at the moment, the majority of these books have those just square type of mazes or mazes that you can put into a shape like a circle or a triangle or something like that. These particular mazes, the hand-drawn mazes, I don't see very often particularly in KDP books. So this is going to give you a huge advantage in terms of setting your book out or differentiating your book from all the others. You're going to have a point of difference. Like I say, they're called hand-drawn maze. Sometimes they are also called a tangle maze or a tangle puzzle because all the paths are tangled, which you are going to see in just a sec. So once you get in there, we just click create collection and you need to put a name for your collection. So we'll do children's mazes. Then we hop down here and click view. This takes us into the software. You land on your page and I'm going to quickly run over the main features of the software. We head right down here. We go to page settings. You can select what page size or what book size you want. This relates to all the sizes on Amazon. So whatever Amazon prints is in here, you don't have to do an 8.5 by 11. You can do a six by nine or you can do any other size of book that you want. So you get to select what size of book you want. You can include whether you want page numbering or not. Here is where you can toggle your solutions. If you watched my last video about how to sell more puzzle books, one of the tips that I had was make sure to include solutions, which might seem silly, but I have seen books that don't include solutions. And if you were thinking of not putting solutions in to save money on printing, because obviously that's going to take up pages at the end of your book, make sure you put solutions in. So here you can just have some options with your solutions, whether you'll have one solution per page, two, four, six, or eight. I personally do not suggest having one solution per page. Try to go four to six. I would like to have four solutions per page for mine, and you can toggle whether to have the puzzle number on the solutions, which I think is a good idea so that they're not confused about which solution relates to which puzzle. What the different menu down the side here is, the first tab is the mazes tab. So this is where you can choose from what type of maze you want on your page or in your book. Then we have a quick book 
creator. What this does is if you are not fussed or if you don't have anything specific in mind of the type of mazes you want in your book, you can just go here and click which mazes that you want. So say you want this type of maze, this type of maze, and this type of maze, and you want 20 of each in your book. You just do that. You click that you want 60 mazes per book and you create the book. It takes a second and then you are basically done if you wanted to. I would not suggest leaving it that way, but you now have a 60 maze book already created. And then once it's created the book, you can just see we've got pages and pages of different mazes and then it's on to the next one now if you don't like that it's got the first mazes all bunched together and then the next maze is all bunched together you can click this button here to randomize the pages and then you've got all different mazes all spread out so they're not doing the same maze type for 20 pages and then the next maze type for 20 pages so it just mixes it up a little bit with one click of a button great feature. So the next tab is where you can upload your images. If you want to provide your own for your pages, that's where you can upload anything that you want. Then we have this design elements feature here. Now this design elements feature is images provided by the software creators and they are designed specifically by their designers for this software. They're not just stock illustrations or anything that, that they've purchased or got for free from any of the stock websites and you have access to images on all different topics that you might want to use in a maze book you just click this expand button and it will give you all the images within each topic that you can add to your pages if you want so that's a very quick overview of what each of the features are I am going to create page I might get two pages done depending on how long it takes me but let's see what we get what we get done the first maze that I want to create is going to have three paths to one item the child has to choose the right path to get to the end of the maze. So we just find the type of maze that we want. There is a massive range of mazes in here. Although one thing I just want to point out is that I do have the most premium, I guess, version. I chose to have all the features because I wanted to try everything out and see the difference between the basic and sort of like the premium versions of the software. And just excuse these white boxes. There are mazes there, but when I'm running a screen sharing software, my computer just doesn't run very efficiently and images will take ages to load and stuff like that. But trust me, there are mazes here even though there are white boxes. So for the first one I would like to choose one that's got three entry points and one exit. To see the rest we just click expand and then there's all different shapes and tangles that you can choose from. Let me just pick one that I think I like. All right, and I've chose this one here. You just click on it and it will automatically show up on your page. If you want to make the maze bigger or smaller, all you do is pull these corners. You can just click and drag and move it around. This software is very simple, very user-friendly. You do not have to be advanced or graphic designer or illustrator or anything like that. It is super user-friendly and very beginner-friendly too. So we just drag it around to where we want it. And I've decided I'm going to do this as a bee-themed maze and I am providing my own images that is just because I feel like it's just one extra way that you can make your pages even more unique there's nothing wrong with using the images in here in the design elements if you want but I, I feel like that's just taking just that extra step to create something completely different and just really unique so we go over here to the upload images section so I have a variety of E images that I've chosen. I'm just going to click drag all of those into this upload section. And from here, that's all of our images. So what I'm going to do is this is the B and the B needs to find its way using the right path to the hive. We click the image and we click insert. So I'm going to drag this down here. But I want the B to find the honey and just gonna drag it. I like how those little drip honey drips are in the inside the maze. That's where the bee is going. It needs to find its way to the hive and it has to figure out which pathway it's going to get it there. And then I just want to add lots of little cute fun elements in there. So I'm going to put in this honey stick thing spoon I don't know what those I can't remember what they're called those things that you put in a honey pot to get honey out so that can go there I might put some of this honeycomb in as well 
and it's just really fun. You just get to play around, you get to be a bit creative and I really like that. That's what I really like about this software. You get to, you just get to create something fun. So the idea with these types of puzzles, these mazes, what I actually really like about them is it's not just whacking a, a maze on a page, especially when you're creating for children. You need to create a story. You need to create a reason for them to do the maze. If you're targeting children and you just put a maze on a page, that's just boring. They're not going to be interested in that. They need a story. Why do they want to do the maze? They want the bee to find the honey. So try to think of a story. It doesn't have to be complex. Kids, kids are simple. They don't need anything super complicated and anything like that. But just try and make it fun. And something else, just to show you another feature of this software, is that you can, let's say for, just say for example, I wanted to have this be here. I don't want it over the maze. You can just right click if you're on a Windows computer or control click if you're on a Mac. It brings up this little extra menu where you can move it to the back um, just behind one element or you can move it right to the back so that the maze goes over that image. So you can have backgrounds and things like that behind the maze and just bring that maze forward or push that background back so that it's not covering the maze or, you know, if, you, if it's hiding some part of the maze, you can bring that maze forward. That's a cool little feature too that you can have on there so you can have things layered on top of each other. So I think that's all I'm going to do for elements. I'm going to pop some text in there because I think that every puzzle has to have some sort of text. So I'm going to add in be happy. And then this is where you, and sorry, I just clicked up here to get that text box up. So on each page, this little menu will be above each page. You can just click that text box. And then we have the option of a ridiculous amount of fonts <laughs> that you can use in your pages. I have already looked through them to see which ones I liked because it would have taken me forever to sit and go through them in this video. There's just a huge amount. And luckily it does give you a preview here on the side. So you don't have to sit and click on every single one of them to see what the fonts are. The font I'm going to use is this one, Barry Sito, and so I think that looks really fun. And then same thing, you just use these to drag it around wherever you want it. You can change the size up here too, and you can align the text as well. You can also change the color of the font if you want to. So I'm just going to pop that there. I might make it a bit bigger even more. And then I also think, particularly with children's books, but I think with any kind of puzzle book, you need to give direction. And this is kind of where that story comes in. If we just click the text box again, and another little box comes up down here I'm going to write can you help the bee find its way back to the hive so either the child's going to read that and if they can if they're an age where they can read they'll be able to say okay we have to get the bee back to the hive let's find the right path to get back to the hive or the parent will be saying okay this maze you have to get that bee back to that hive and so then the kid understands the point of the maze this font I'm going to change as well and I'm going to do another fun font. And again, you can just make it bigger or smaller, drag it around wherever you want. And I think that looks pretty cute. I'm happy with that. I think it looks fun and it gives clear direction on what the point of the maze is. I really like it. And that was pretty simple. So 
maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes making a page like that. And I think a kid is really going to love that. I will do another page and hopefully it won't make this video go too long. So we just click up here and do add page. Then I'll scroll down here and we've got the second page, but I'll scroll down a bit further just to show you what the solutions look like. That's the solutions. It's giving the numbers so that the child or the parent knows that the solution relates to the number one maze that's on page one. So if I had multiple mazes on a page, that would be one dash two. 1 3, depending on how many mazes you have per page, but I'm just going to be having one maze per page. But that's basically what the solutions look like, and you'll have the second solution there, third solution down here, and the fourth solution down there. For the next one, I think I'm going to do a classic sort of pirate themed maze, and this is just going to be a very simple one entry point, one exit point type of maze. So this is just going to be this maze type one going to expand that and let me see I'm just going to choose this one I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and going to get my images that I've chosen this one and upload them here okay so I've got all my pirate images uploaded let's just start creating I've chosen a girl pirate for this one because girls can be pirates too so she's going to go there and she needs to find her way to the treasure I think I want a parrot to sit on the treasure because he's protecting it. Make sure no one else comes except the princess pirate. One thing I'm going to show you with this particular maze is how to put images or elements over the maze without interrupting the path of the maze. So what we do is we click on this maze, okay? And up here, it gives us the options of what we wanna do with the path. One of the great features of this is you don't have to pick the path that the software automatically defaults to. If you wanna choose a different path, you can. So you have the choice on this particular maze Every maze is different, but this particular maze has a path. See how it's showing path one is active and it's just giving you a preview here. This won't print out on your maze. This is just for you to see on your screen where the path is. So pathway one, that shows you the solution. If you wanted the second pathway, you click apply to the second path and it shows you a different way that you can go. And then if, you, if I chose path two, you can see that my map is in the way of that path. If I choose path three, it changes again. My map's not in the way there, but it's got a different pathway to go. So I'm going to stick to path one. And then what you can do is you can block the path so that there is only one way to go. If you don't want there to be two solutions, you can put things in the way of the maze. So when the child's doing it, for example, I'm gonna keep path one. I'm gonna move the map over a bit more. That means that that child, if it came this way and went, oh, no, I can't go that way because I didn't want them to go that way. I want them to go the way that path one says and path one doesn't come down this part of the maze. Hoping this makes sense. So you can block off the pathways to make sure there is only one solution because you don't want the child to do it and then their solution is different to what's in the solution pages at the end, even though they're not wrong, but you want their solution to match the page at the back. If we do that, one other thing I need to block is this one here because I don't want them to go this way either. So I've got a skull and crossbones that I'm going to pop down here. I'm going to put it over here, which means no entry, go back, you cannot come this way. And that's going to cover that. So when we click on this path again, it's going to show that the only way that the child can go is the way that the solution is going to show so i've blocked the other pathways so they can't go that way so that's just something else that helps you make completely unique mazes so even if you use this maze more than once you can have different pathways which means that is now a different unique maze i'm just going to pop in a little bit of text
that's my pirate treasure page. I love it. I have so much fun making these mazes and these puzzles. Now once you have done all your pages and you're ready to finish up, one thing you just need to make sure you do is make sure you download your pages before you shut the software down. This software does not save your creations or your pages so what you can do is you can download the individual pages if you want here by this local download button or if you're just happy to download that book as it is complete you just click this download button up here. For both of these options depending on the level of software you buy you can download as a pdf a powerpoint a png or a jpeg if you are just going to download straight up upload, upload that to kdp you can just download as a pdf if you want to do some extra stuff to it you can download to powerpoint but i'm going to show you why you might want to download it as a powerpoint but what i do want to show you is my book because I have made a couple of extra pages off camera because it was going to take too long recording. But there's the Pirates one and then, oh, it's showing you them together. So there's the B one on the left. I then created this Easter one just to show you a different kind of maze. So this Easter one has four entry points and four exit points. So the idea of this one is to find which Easter bunny is matched to which egg. These ones don't have a right and wrong answer. It's just which bunny matches which egg. Egg. The other one that I created was this one, where is my dog bone? So this has two entry points, two exit points, and one leads to his bone and one leads to a hungry alligator. There is no wrong path to take as such in the sense of both paths lead somewhere, but obviously you want the dog to get to the bone and not the alligator. And then that's the page uh, with the solutions for them. So that's a couple of extra pages that I made. I'm really happy with them. I especially love this one with the four ex entry and exits. And as a side note, Easter's coming up. It's the perfect time to be creating books for Easter. Now let me show you why you would want to download this as a PowerPoint. If you decide that you don't want to create a book that's just all mazes, let's say you want to create an activity book. How do you get the other pages in them? So an activity book or, or maybe not such an activity book but a variety of puzzles, puzzle book, you need to be able to add more pages into them. Okay so if you open this up in PowerPoint, you've downloaded it in PowerPoint, you open it up, you can add whatever pages you want. Say you want to add up the front here a page with copyright information or with information to your email list because it has you have a freebie or something that you want to give away. Let's say we want to have a maze, but then I want to have a coloring page. Now I'm going to stick to the Easter theme because the last puzzle I did was Easter. So I've decided that after that first maze, which in my Easter book would be related to Easter, I want a coloring image. So I've just added in a coloring image. Then let's say after the coloring image, we want something else. I want a, a letter tracing page to go in there. Plus it's got a little bit of coloring on it too. I'm going to add in a page related to letter tracing. And then let's say we do want another maze. So we keep a maze, pretend that's an Easter maze. But then let's say after that maze, we want something else. I want one of these shadow games where you have to match the shadows. So what we could do is pop that in and then I'm going to add in a text box. a shadow page where they just draw a line to what shadow matches what image. You'll get the idea if you're wanting to create a book that's got variety of puzzles or if you're wanting to create an activity book, download it in PowerPoint and you can add all the extra pages in there. I think that is such a great feature that differentiates this from some of the other softwares out there where once you've created your puzzles and you download the document, they only usually give you a PDF and you're stuck with that PDF. This is so simple and so easy. Such a quick, easy way to, to take that book of mazes that we've just made and add even more to it. And one last thing that I do just want to show you is in relation to if you wanted to create printable products. If you want to create printables that you're selling on Etsy or on your own store, or even if you want to create a book on KDP in color, I created this maze in the hand-drawn maze software and I just used color. Printables are huge, particularly on Etsy. I know there's a lot of people making very good money from selling printables on Etsy. I just used this maze, which was a three entry maze and a three exit maze. So this one is where this duck helped the little duck find her way back to mum. 
all the paths lead somewhere, but obviously she doesn't want to go back to the pond because there's nobody there. She definitely doesn't want to go to the fire. She needs to find which path takes her back to her mum at the top there. And it was actually really fun making it in colour, just a different type of creativity and you can use different types of images. And I was able to use the software to make the maze blue. So you can make the mazes different colours, you can make the solutions different colours and it's just another feature that gives you something else different and something else unique that you can do. I cannot rave about it enough. I have really enjoyed using it the last couple of weeks but I think I might leave it at that. I could just sit here all day making mazes on camera for for you to show you what you can do but this video is probably long enough as it is so what do you guys think do you like these pages that i made i think they're awesome i'm really happy with them i printed them out i gave them to my little girl she loves mazes and she loved doing these ones and she's asked me to <laughs> to make more of them so i might be using this software more for personal use than i will be for making books it seems like at this point but Getting the tick of approval from her, I think, is a very good sign. So just to clarify, this software is going to be available for purchase on Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there will be some great discounts for the first few days. So keep an eye out for my video that's being released tomorrow for all the details on how you can get it for the cheapest price as well as my bonus. If you do want to see more videos about puzzle books, the puzzle book niche and how to make puzzle books, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.